What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be diving on into Rise to Ruins, which for the first time in a long time has had a content update. Uh, the game actually was looking for a funding source, like a producer or whatever, to continue the development of the game. And so they've been on hiatus for a while, and now they are back having secured that funding, and actually they're starting to pump out updates again. I bring it up because that's a good thing. Like, in situations like that, where you can absolutely, like, the game is basically, like, in a solid state, there is every force in the world acting upon someone to just, like, walk away and, like, call it a day. And honestly, I, I respect the fact that they said a thing on the Steam discussion boards. They were like, we are looking for funding. We swear to God we'll be back once we secure that funding. And it was a while. And now they're back having secured the funding. And nobody said they had to do that. It would have been very, very easy to just disappear into the darkness and, like, never come back. But instead, they honored their word. They showed up back. And so we're checking out Rise to Ruins today. Now, we're going to dive on in. If you've never seen this game before, it is a magical colony survival god game. Uh, so it's like RimWorld, but RimWorld if you had, like, black and white style god powers. You can light stuff on fire, you can summon golems, uh, you can raise zombies and all kinds of stuff. Like, you can basically do all kinds of fun god power things on the in-between while people are managing the relationships and getting a minus three or whatever because they didn't eat at a table. So anyways, let's play the game. We're going to dive on into the world map. We're going to have to select a difficulty here in just a second. I'll probably just leave it on, like, whatever the default is. Yeah, we'll go We'll go on survival mode. Why not, dude? We've only got, like, 30, 35 minutes to kill. But anyways, if you wanted to get Rise to Ruins for yourself, as always, I try to say that I've put it down in the description so that you can check that on out. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Twist stream and my Discord. Pretty good chance I'm probably going to stream this game. I like this game a lot. This is one of those games that I dumped a ton of hours into back when it first came out. And so anyways, all that stuff is down there. Now, as you survive, you are going to unlock, like, new goals. And as you accomplish goals, like, things are going to happen. I think this, if I remember correctly, it's been a really long time since I've played. But yeah, you get to god experience. And you can actually, like, level up your god in between, like, maps and in between colonies. I'll probably just go for a place that looks like it has lots of inland water or, like, lakes or something. Yeah, Valencia. That sounds like the place for me. Let us establish a village in the region of Valencia. All right, so we've established an area in Valencia. Taking a look around, we're just going to kind of like survey the map for a minute and figure out where stuff is at that we may want in order to utilize. Now, we've got a pretty good lake right here, and that's going to block off, I think, southern... Well, I don't know if the zombies can cross the water right here. Hmm... We'll find out, I guess. I don't know. Things are going to attack us pretty quickly. Like, within the first 15, 20 minutes of the game, you get attacked. We do have a nice little nook right here. The downside to this is that we've got to clear all these trees, and we've got to clear all this rock right here if we really want to make use of it. But it's going to be really easy to defend. Just a small wall right there, small wall right here, small wall right here, and, like, we're done. We've pretty much got ourselves all nice and safe. So while building space is going to be a little bit of a constraint if we build over here, I do think that long term it gives us options. The worst case scenario is we could just make like a big L wall right here. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let's start with our camp right there. And as you can see, our villagers are going to start teleporting in with the power of like crunch berries or I don't even know. Like they've got the magic of lucky charms or something. It allows them to teleport on in. And they're going to start building the baseline camp. Now, things you really want to build in the early game, uh, there are things, there are gotchas in this game. You want to build a rain catch about as soon as possible, and so we're going to get that going. And then the other thing that you're probably going to want to build is you're probably going to want to build a water purifier. And we do have, like, a little lake right here, so I feel okay about the construction of that right there. Uh, so the difference between these two, how do we differentiate? Well, the rain catch catches rain and doesn't need to be purified, and people can just drink out of it whenever they get hot. Uh, when this building right here actually takes dirty water and cleans it. And then they will transport it on over to a fountain where people can drink it. And so anyways, there's our kind of water production line all nice and set up. I am going to have to chop some trees. We're not going to have enough wood to get all these tasks done. So I'm going to start by chopping the trees over here to make sure that just we've got a little bit more building space. I'd like to get rid of these little strips right here too. And then I'd probably, honestly, I'm probably just going to cut this straight across in a minute. But that's a long ways into the game. we got to kind of, like, take our time. We're also going to need some stone. So we're going to go ahead and start whittling on this wall right here. 
just to give ourselves some more building space. And the builders that we have assigned right now, uh, we have 12 of them on this little panel on this side. And then we have 8 people that are unemployed right now. It won't let me sign more builders because the builders, I think, are dictated by the camp over here. But if we had, like, another workshop or whatever, they'd absolutely be able to add a few more workers. So while we wait for these projects to get done, I'm going to make a little cut right here. And then we'll come back to it and talk about kind of secondary priorities, I guess. Things that I want to work on next after we've got the basics all nice and lined up. All right, so as you can see, little projects have been done. The water collector is all ready to go. So if we get any early rain, that'll basically bail us out and make sure we don't die of thirst. And if there is no early game rain and we end up in kind of like a bad situation, we've got the water purifier on standby. Now for the rain catch, you do have to assign a water master. That's going to be a guy whose job it is to basically take a bucket and run the water to the fountains where people drink it over and over and over again. There we go, and our water purification is up now. So what you should see is the guys that we assigned to the water purifier, they should come down here to the lake, and they should grab water from the lake and then put it inside of the fountains at some point. I don't know if we need to queue up and tell them to gather the water from over here. I think they just do it automatically from what I recall. The other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab some of this food over here for the early game real fast. And just try to make sure that we've got a little bit of that laying around. Uh, these are, I think, turnips over here. And then all the way up here we have carrots as well that we can kind of get down on. And so it's a good idea to make sure that we have that stuff. Unfortunately, they probably won't go gather it until I set up like a farm. And so I'm going to put a farm right there. Uh, they're also not going to chop resources most of the time unless you actively need those resources for a building. So if you've queued up a bunch of resource chopping but you don't have any building blueprints put down and they're not gathering anything, uh, that's going to be what's going wrong there is that builders will only gather the things they need to build if there is an active blueprint that is awaiting material drop-off. If you want them to just independently collect wood or collect stones, you've actually got to build the specific building that hires people to only do that. Uh, we are going to get some immigrants pretty soon, but I don't think we have to worry about them for right now. There's our first fountain right there. As you can see, it is quite dry and quite empty, unfortunately. I actually did have to queue them up to go and grab the water. I totally forgot about that command. It's been so long. Apparently the harvest food and water button does it. I thought it was just for food. It's been a while and my recollection was unfortunately poor. But as you can see, they're gathering up dirty water. And then the water master should bring it over here and boil it so that it becomes pure. And then they'll dump it off inside the small fountain. I don't know if this water is going to deplete with time or if this reservoir is going to refill with the rain. I actually don't know how complex that mechanic is. Uh, apparently somebody's burning up right now because, oh yeah, it's pretty warm outside. Okay, we gotta build them some houses too. We've got a lot of tasks that we need to get underway in the early game. So let's go ahead and jump on back and we will go to our housing. And we've got dog houses. Uh, dogs in this game, they'll move in and they'll fight enemies for you and stuff like that. Like you can build specific dog houses just to make the dogs happy. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop a house right there. We'll get like a starting house right there. Another starting house right there. Maybe another starting house right there. And that should more or less occupy the duration of our remaining day. I don't think there's too many more things that we need to get underway. Uh, we've got a farm being built over here, so let's go ahead and we will assign farmers to this building. There we go. You can change the color scheme of all the villagers if you want to. That's a new feature that they've added since the last time that I played, so you can actually go like full Star Trek with this game and make all the people of varying jobs wear specific uniforms. I don't do it because there's already like a setup for that, like water masters are always kind of blue-purple. They're always kind of like that blurply-wurply color, and then farmers are always green and yellow, so they got like the Oakland A's thing going on. Uh, but nonetheless, what you'll see is the farmers are down here, and they're going to start gathering some of these. They're going to bring them back, and they're going to plant them. Oh, yeah, look at that. The water's getting kind of low. Yeah, okay, fair enough. It definitely looks like the water level is going down right there. What is that? Did the lake just fart, dude? Rocky trash. Okay. I forgot about that. So there's trash in this game. You've actually got to have like a sanitation department to take care of things for you. So they'll gather up the trash and they'll smelt it down into other stuff. And if there's too much trash laying around, what will ultimately happen is if there's too much trash laying around, trash golems will start to spawn and they'll start to mess with you. And it can be kind of a headache. Okay, so the water masters are bringing things over here. As of yet, though, we've got to wait and see if they're going to do anything else with it. 
And as you can see on this little meter right here, our water has gone up and then back down. People are getting drinks and stuff because like everybody in our village basically starts out thirsty. And so anyways, they're going to be drinking through the water pretty aggressively, trying to get their water levels taken care of. Every single person in the village has a bunch of needs that they need to have fulfilled. And then on top of that, they've all got equipment that they can put on if they become warriors or whatever else. There's just all kinds of things in this game and like levels of kind of depth going on that you just got to learn to play around with. I actually don't know if that water is getting lower. It is, actually. When they were walking through it before, it was, like, waist high. Now it's only up to their ankles. That's a nice little detail that I don't think I've ever noticed while I was playing the game. Uh, the houses are going up and getting built. The reason why houses are important is based on the daily temperature. Uh, your people's body temperature is going to go up, and it's going to go down. And if it's too cold, they need to go inside and warm up. If it's too hot, they need to get into the shade and they need to warm up. Uh, stuff like that is actually pretty important to recognize early on in the game. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time and you're probably not going to make it over the course of like your first year or so. I think the first time I played this game, like everybody died of heat exhaustion within like my first hour of playing. Just because like I didn't really know what was going on. Like I was just fiddling with things and I was like, okay, it said that people are thirsty, but they'll get a drink out of the lake or whatever. They'll drink out of the lake like a dog. They'll be fine. Uh, they were not fine. They died horribly. I'd actually very much like for these trees to be gone a little bit quicker. Uh, it's midday right now, so this is the hottest part of the day. I wouldn't stress too much. How much water does this actually hold? It's got 44 water inside of it, but I actually don't know what the total storage is because it looks like we've actually got like 73 water over here. Oh, they actually they put 40 water inside the fountain right there so people can come get drinks and whatnot. Very nice. Uh, we are going to need rain, though. Uh, rain is going to... Rain supplies water a lot better than purification. I'm going to be real, real honest with you. Uh, rain is the great giver in this game. And so if we don't get some rain pretty soon, that's going to be a bummer. It's a spring. It's the spring, so there's a chance. I mean, you know, I thought that we were all, like, where I live, it's been like 80 degrees for like the last two weeks. So I thought we were fully on the runway to summer, you know what I mean, here in late March. But nope, it's been pissing down raining now for like three days out of nowhere. And so you can never tell in spring. If you don't like the weather, check back in 10 minutes. It'll be, it'll be different. Um, obviously we need to build a dog house because I'm a big dog guy. I personally, I have a bulldog and a Labrador Retriever. I love dogs. They are my bestest buddies. I also have cats, too. I've never really understood the divide between cat and dog people. Never really understood that divide. Like, you can have, you can have both, or you can have, like, one or the other. It's all good. Like, we don't need to, we don't need to be making, you know, hard declarations like this. Everything's gonna be fine. Oh, they found silk in one of the trees. That's pretty cool. They must have killed some poor little silkworm. They're getting the rest of the houses set up. We are gonna have to worry about defending ourselves, but honestly, for the first night, I don't think we need to build defenses just yet. Uh, so, like, we're gonna get attacked. This is not a game that's gonna pull punches with you. Wow, you just drank, like, an entire fountain's worth of water. I'm not even mad. That's just impressive. That's just truly and deeply impressive, like how much water you just drank by yourself. I'm just impressed by the, the feat of prowess. I couldn't drink that much water if I tried. I'd be like a human balloon. All right, well, things are moving along. All right, so now that all of our buildings are done, we've got all our houses completed. Uh, we've run out of building slots, so we only have three building slots left, and we're going to have to, like, deal with that. And so anyways, the best way to deal with that is just to go to your civics and to build an ancillary. Uh, this is basically an extension of like your storage inside your main camp. You can also upgrade buildings. Uh, so if we take a look right here for six wood and six rocks, we can upgrade this to a large camp. And in fact, I recommend that we do because that's going to increase our building queue over here. So that's our home occupancy. Sorry, there is there it is right there. You can only have a certain number of buildings in this game until you expand like the central buildings and make them larger. And so anyways, the ancillary will help out with that. It'll give us a few more. And then upgrading the camp, I think, will also give us a few more if my memory is serving me properly. I did build a trash can over here. We're going to have to assign a garbage man. And we've got too much garbage laying around. 
And so anyways, down here, there's tons and tons of garbage laying all over the place. And so if we can get two or three garbage cans, that'll probably help out a little bit. We also want to start thinking about our harvesting needs. Um, I do think that once we get our building slots up and running, we should definitely get a lumber shack going, and we should definitely get a mining facility going. Once we've got those, we should probably get a crystal harvestry, because I think we have crystals around here somewhere. Yeah, there's crystals right over here. And crystals are going to be... We need crystals for, like, magical buildings and stuff. Uh, so this game also has, like, an aspect of tower defense to it. At a certain point, you're going to be nonstop attacked by monsters. And so you need to have kind of, like, tunnels, and you need to have walls, and you need to have guards on the walls that are just going to be over there all day, every day, firing arrows at things. And what's interesting about this game is that it's actually really granular. Like, you actively need to have, like, ammo supplied. So, like, if you have an archery tower, you need to make ammo for that archery tower. And then someone's got to carry the ammo from over here to the archery tower and resupply it. Like, there's a bunch of little granular details to this game that I think some people won't like, but I actually find to be quite pleasing and, and sort of fun to play around with. The only other game that's kind of, like, at this game's level of, like, random depth with moving around, like, logistical supply chains is probably, like, Songs of Six. And it's not very frequent that, like, developers go all in and are just like, Shrug, let's see how much logistics we can put into this thing. Uh, and I, I like it. We still need houses for, like, four more people. And so, pretty good chance, once I get my buildings back up and running, that we'll put another house. Actually, I could probably upgrade one of these guys. 40 wood, 16 rocks. Yeah, we could probably go for, like, standard housing, maybe. It gives a plus three. That'll save us housing space, so we might as well just upgrade two of these to just standard housing. There you go. Oh, we need cut stone for that. Okay, well, we'll deal with the cut stone a little bit later. Or was that rocks right there? I think that's just rocks. I don't know. Somebody should go down and cut it. We've got lots of jobs running right now. There we go. Our ancillary's done. So that supplied us with six more building slots. Uh, we are going to have to use community organizers in order to get this done. And so these guys over here are basically going to run around and start gathering things off the ground and putting them inside the ancillary uh, so that our storage looks a little bit nicer and looks a little bit better. This is effectively, for all intents and purposes, a warehouse, and it holds a bunch of stuff. You can make bigger ones later on, and then also our storage space will be expanded once the camp is finished. Uh, once these houses are done right here, everybody should be housed, so we should no longer have to worry about heat and, like, cold exposure. There we go. So now we're up to 22 buildings we can play around with. Uh, do I have a garbage man? I don't think I have a garbage man. I think you need a, a place to stick trash. They can use this, but only trashers can empty it, take the trash to the burner, the processor, or the landfill. Yeah, so they'll dump stuff off inside the trash can. It can hold a lot. It can hold 16 of each type of trash. And we can always just build another one. You can always upgrade it, too. That's an option, but we need some boards to do that. So we're going to have to set up a supply chain in order to make that work properly. Still, we've almost got all the trees chopped down over here, which is going to liberate a little bit more space. If you want to get rid of the tree stumps that are on the ground, I see a lot of new players get confused about this. There's a button in the bottom right corner called Destroy Terrain. And it will allow you to go through and get rid of the stumps, like so. And then this becomes buildable space. Uh, but yeah, I've seen people worry about that a lot, where they're like, Oh, I can't build on top of the rocks, or I can't build on top of, like, the tree stumps. How do I get more space? Uh, you actually gotta bulldoze the land. Uh, you just gotta take care of it, and it's just an extra command that's down on the bottom of the right. Like I said, for better or worse, this game is very granular. It's got lots of moving parts. Uh, it's effectively a colony survival game that's been ramped up to 11. And like I said already, the only game that I've ever really seen go in on the details like that is Songs of Six. All right, so nighttime is nearly upon us. We are about to be under attack. The good news is we've got some rain, and so we now have a very, very good source of fresh water. And as you can see, people are drawing from the rain catcher right now, and they're taking it over to their houses. Uh, they do that on purpose so that if there's a shortage, they have a stockpile in their house that they can live off of for a little while. So our first level two house is up, which is great. Uh, dusk is coming on in, and so we've basically got 90% of our population housed right now. Because I'm bad at math. We've got 18. Actually, I did it in my head. Yay! 18 out of our 20 people are housed at the moment, so that's good. And as you can see, they're moving resources and stuff around. Just prepping for the new arrivals. For the life of me, I don't know how you fit seven people inside of, like, a shanty shack. But we figured it out. We have we have mastered the physics of the situation. Uh, we are going to destroy some of these trees down here, I think. 
I'm gonna try to do it carefully without destroying my source of food down here because these turnips and whatnot will regrow. Uh, but sometimes you mess it up and it is what it is. The good news is the rain refilled the lake, so it's actually waist high again. And the monsters are enraged! What are they mad about? I don't know, dude. The monsters always seem to be salty about something. It's kind of like when you're washing the dishes, you know what I mean? And you're like washing a bowl and the water catches the angle of the bowl just right and it launches water onto your shirt and you feel like that overwhelming feeling of rage for just like that briefest of seconds, your monkey brain is just like, ah, and like you want to lose it and you like want to just be like, ah, I hate dishes and like throw the bowl at the wall, but you don't do it right. But for that brief like microsecond, you just get like irrationally angry. I like to imagine that the monsters dwell just in that headspace. Am I the only person that, that happens to you, dude? I hate that so much. Like you'll be washing a spoon or you'll be like washing a bowl. And for whatever reason, it'll catch that angle in the bowl just right coming out of the faucet. And it just like launches into the front of you like a super soaker. Ugh! It tilts me. I hate it when that happens. Sorry, I feel like I got off on a tangent here. I feel like I got off on a very real tangent here. Uh, let's see. We've got... Actually, our woody trash is almost full. Are people fighting? Oh, yeah, dude. There's a zombie down here. Uh, you can click on that right there. That's a resource. Like, all that stuff is called essence. Uh, later on, you're going to get magical pylons that collect the essence from anything that dies. And then you use it as fuel to basically power your magic spells. And also your towers and the things that are defending your village. And so there is a layer of complication here. This is a Cullis Gate. You can throw stuff inside of it. When you throw things inside of it, you get more mana. So it's a nice thing to build next to. And, like, honestly, one of the reasons why I built over here... So as you can see, the zombies have arrived. My villagers are fighting with them and whatnot. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Your villagers are actually pretty sturdy in this game, at least for the first night. Like, they aren't in too bad of shape. You will be, like, fine. I, I don't think I've ever lost the game on the first night by not building defenses. I think you're, like, fairly safe. One thing to be aware of, though, is that they do have, like, bravery and, like, cowardice. And so they will only fight enemies for, like, a certain amount of time before they run away and flee. Basically, they've got, like, a health trigger that, like, when they hit a certain health level, they bail out. And so, unfortunately, our stockpile is taking a little tiny bit of a scuffing right now because they came in from the south and nobody really defended the stockpile. The good news is they're leveling up from this combat too. Like each of your characters has like little skill levels effectively and they get better at stuff. So this guy right here is apparently wielding the power of a 25 carats while he beats that thing to death. Now, this game is going to have all kinds of humorous stuff like that that's going to come up from time to time where like a villager picks up a carrot and decides to beat a zombie to death with it. It's just one of those little things. It's one of those odd little things that happens. Yeah, I'm going to need to wall this off tomorrow night so that they stop getting at the stockpile. You can't repair buildings manually in this game. Uh, you have to build a maintenance building, and then people will go out and repair stuff. So if we lose our camp, we actually kind of, like, lose the game. I didn't know we were going to get hit quite this hard from the south. But to be fair, they did say that the monsters were enraged, and so I think today we need to focus on effectively getting our defenses up and running while we wait. And so let's take a look at the defensive menu and kind of get a rough idea what we want to do here. Uh, so we can get a bow tower. It's going to take some crystals, it's going to take some wood, and it's going to take some rocks. Uh, it fires ballista bolts. We can get a bullet tower. I think a bullet polisher is all that you need for that. And so that might be a little bit easier. So yeah, let's get a bullet tower in to kind of like the south here and just sort of pinch that area. And then we need a rock tumbler in order to make that work. And so we need to go to refining. And I believe the rock tumbler should be around here somewhere. There we go. So we've got a rock tumbler on this side. The good news is we did not get attacked from the north. And so that makes me pretty happy. We also have nomads coming on in. And so really what we'll try to do today is we'll try to get like a bullet tower in right here. We'll try to get a bullet tower over here. We didn't get hit by anything from the north. And so I'm not that worried about it. These buildings down here, they are reclaimable. If you want them, you can come down and get those buildings. I think if I remember correctly, back when I played the game last time, yeah, so the enemy has a base down here. And eventually we can go down here and attack this base and we can destroy it. But they're going to spread kind of like the Zerg in, in War... Or I'm sorry, in StarCraft. I almost lost all of my nerd credibility right there, dude. It almost happened. I almost embarrassed myself. All right. 
But then again, it's not like I haven't embarrassed myself on the internet as a career for the last 10 years. So, like, you know, I'm sort of used to it. Like, I'm, I'm sort of, like, fine with it. Not really that hung up about it. Looks like all of our building is done. They've got a little bit left to go over here with the crystal gathering. I don't recall if builders... Yeah, they can, actually. I was going to say, I don't recall if builders, by default, can go get crystals or if they need a special building to do that. And we probably want to set up... Nomads arrived, but I don't see them. They should get here soon, I think. Like, when it says nomads arrived in the region, we should get, like, villagers that join our colony pretty shortly, I think. So yeah, there it is. The nomads are actually officially arriving right now. It's weird. It, like, announces that the nomads are in the region, and then, like, five minutes later, you actually get the nomads. And, and so, like, there, there's going to be two pop-ups right there that you're going to want to watch out for. Uh, the bullet tower is done. Which is great. I don't think anybody actually has to do anything with the bullet tower. Once the rock tumbler is all nice and finished off, effectively he's just going to produce bullets and run it down to here. I probably should have built it a little bit closer to the tower. But if we start getting hit from this right hand side, I may be putting things over there as well. So it's kind of hard to say. Did they get this forest knocked down over here? Like I really need this forest to be knocked down on this side. That way we've got a little bit more building space. I'd also like to hollow this out right here if we can do it, but we'll keep an eye on it. For right now, it's not like a massive concern. So our community organizers are ready to go. They're delivering things. Do we still have trash laying around all over the place? We are maxed out on wooden trash. It's okay. It's just so long as, like... There's not too much trash laying around. There can be, like, a little bit of trash. You just don't want to deal with trash golems as the game goes along because they become a threat from inside your own borders that you have to, like, deal with pretty frequently. And so anyways... Oh, really? The tumbler requires a mining facility. A little bit of a bummer. A little bit of a bummer. So we don't have the workers to make the bullets for the thing over here. I'm definitely going to need more nomads if we want this to work. But then again, I think I have a lot of people assigned a building, too. So we can probably take that down to like eight builders. There we go. That frees us up. Uh, we'll get two tumblers over here. And then with this building right here, we want them to produce, let's say, just maintain like 12 bullets. We'll call it 18 bullets. There we go. 18 cannonballs, basically. And actually, I want to see if this, it says it requires a mining facility, but I'm not quite so sure. Yeah, they just made the balls anyways, so the great powerful ballsmith has made forth the balls of defense that the enemy might bounce off of our walls and feel the sting of our balls whenever they try to go through this pass right here. And so as you can see, she's dropping off the bullets to the tower. The downside is the tower I don't think holds that many bullets. Oh, he gets 100 shots per bullet? Oh, dude, I have totally forgot about that. All right, well, then 18's probably overdoing it. We'll leave that on, like, 5. I didn't realize that, like, one of these fully reloads the tower. I learned a new thing today. Oh, and it looks like you can also have, like, backup reloads so that when you run out of bullets, you can go, ch -ch -ch, you know, rack that thing and get it ready to go so that you can hit the enemy with a little bit more of that gug 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 action. Alright, well, bullet tower is good to go, so at the bare minimum, that should soften up anything that tries to run up on us in the night. Uh, resource management is fine over there. We don't really have a ton of workers. We do need to decide what we want to do next. And so anyways, I'm thinking, like, walls are a really, really good idea. That's just kind of where I'm at with this situation. You can do a curtain wall, but that requires cut stone. You can do, like, a basic stone wall right here. I'd probably just plug that. And then we'll just use the natural topography to defend ourselves. There we go. And we'll kind of just have it bend inwards like that. A little bit more, a little bit more defense on that side. That wall's not going to hold for very long. It's not going to be good for, like, late into the game. But in the early game, it'll be fine for a little bit. Okay. I do need to figure out a way to deal with trash. I do want to make another trash can, but I'd like to get to producing boards about as soon as possible. So, let's go to harvesting, and we're going to get a lumber shack 
Yep, the lumber shack is a little old place where we can get some lumber. There we go. We'll put that over there. Apparently, we had a problem protocol bounce up. I am playing on the unstable beta branch right now. And so anyways, if you go into your Steam settings and you want to play the new content that they've added to the game, you just right-click on the game in your Steam library and you go to betas. And then you just opt into the latest unstable build. If you're familiar with like Project Zomboid or whatever, you'll be right there on the same page. And so far, our population is doing fine. We're doing okay right now. And it's only the morning, so we don't have to worry about threats for a little while. We got a lot of rain coming in, and so our water supply is more or less heavily insured for right now. I think this is a good spot to stop off, but this game is called Rise to Ruins, and there's a really good chance I'll be streaming it on the day that this video goes live. So if you wanted to get a deeper, longer look at the game, you can hang out with me live, and I'll go ahead and do that for you. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we have been rocking with the Rise to Ruins. Tomorrow, we will be rocking with something else. Thank you for hanging out. That's all I got. And I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.